What do you do when your carefully laid plans fall apart? Do you give up or do you curate a new path forward? Today, the crew finally set off from Meganesi and begin their journey to the largest island in the Ionian, Kefalonia. Enamored by its preserved Venetian architecture, bustling port and rich history, the crew's goal this episode is to explore Fiscardo by foot. Their venture, enriched by ancient mythological tales of Cape Alice and progress and in interrupted by issues aboard their vessel. Welcome to Sailing Trinity Season 2, A Greek Sun Odyssey, around the islands in 80 days. Ready to dive into today's adventure? If you'd like to see more of our Odyssey, hit the like and subscribe buttons now. We're super grateful to have you guys involved. Stay tuned as the crew with walking trails to themselves uncover tales of old and bring you along to entertain, educate and immerse you alongside them. Which archaic legends will today mythic odyssey reveal join us this episode to find out without further ado let's dive right in and escape the ordinary together head off we are leaving this beautiful bay that has been our home for a few days but we are looking forward to going somewhere new getting back on the water it's a very short journey right now it's about 10 a.m i believe we should be slipping lines about 10 15. we're gonna have our buddy boat again salties are gonna help us slip our shorelines take the anchor up and head out and bring you on the lovely little sail with us hope you enjoy <laughs> This morning, the crew readied themselves to leave Meganesi behind after a balanced trip navigating both calm and chaos. Remaining in the Ionian, today they will travel 18 nautical miles to their next destination, Viscardo, a bustling port town with timeless charm located on the island of Catalonia. Yep. I'm ready. Bye bye. <laughs> So we've just been circling the bay waiting for salties to free themselves and there they are. Hi! Lovely, we're all safe and ready to head out. Ooh, where's my finger? Here! A little bit choppy. Yeah, it's a bit swelly. A little bit of a chop. Wouldn't call it too much of a swell. Choppy waves. Catalonia, the largest of the Ionian islands, holds a rich place in Greek mythology. According to some variations of the myth, Cephalonia was part of Odysseus's kingdom and played a role in his extensive travels described in Homer's Odyssey. Additionally, Cephalonia is linked to the myth of the couple Cephalus and Procris. The hunter Cephalus, after accidentally killing his wife, overwhelmed with grief, fled to the Ionian islands where he soon established a new life and the island of Cephalonia was allegedly named in his honor. Further, the island's rugged landscapes, caves, and beautiful coastlines visually evoke a sense of the epic adventures and dramatic tales that are the hallmarks of Greek mythology. The island's mythical ties make it a place where ancient stories resonate with the natural beauty of the present. I've got the sail though. But the wind's not very strong. It feels really good to have a sail though. Beautiful day, nice and calm. Isn't that right, Captain? That's right. They didn't hear what you said, but that's right. <laughs> yeah, we're just close, close hauled into the wind. But we've got a slight heel. Oh, 
might want to leave here a little bit. We're gonna attack soon because we're getting close to the land. Yeah. Me to go that way. Yeah. so pretty. The wind does a number on your hair, I'll tell you that much for free. This one as well. We're on our way to Fiscardo, which is a decent sized port on the island of uh, Kefalonia on the northwestern tip. We're going to anchor up on Ormos Fiscardo, which is a, a small little anchorage just inside the opening. We've taken out sort of half of the mainsail and half of the headsail as well, so we're just Cruising along now at four knots on a close reach on our way to Viscardo. Not much longer to go. I to say we'd be in there in the next 45 minutes. With moderate winds guiding them, the crew embraced the opportunity to hone their sailing skills. They then anchored just outside Viscardo's picturesque town alongside their body boat SV Stay Salty. Soon after arriving, they began preparing to explore the historical treasures of this Ionian gem. Fiscardo at the moment and we are on our way to the early Christian Basilica of Fiscardo. Now for all of you architectural nerds I do have some very interesting history about the place but I will be leaving that until we arrive. For now I thought I'd just let you guys know where we're heading. This way. It's really nice to be outside. The springtime is perfect for these kind of things. It's just not too hot yet. It's warm, but I mean, I can still wear some pants and some hiking boots <laughs> and I'm nice and cozy. So yeah, hopefully there's lots to see. Um, it's, it's a ruins of a basilica. And then after that, we'll be doing a little lighthouse tour. There's two lighthouses in Fiscardo that we're going to be visiting and bringing you guys with us to see. So let's go. I'm in my elements. <laughs> Eyes, right? Don't you think? <laughs> we are looking at each other. We're continuing on our walk now. It's kind of nice not being in Australia because I'm not scared of anything just randomly jumping out and trying to kill me while I'm going for a walk. <laughs> So oh, Goldilocks and two bears. <laughs> oh, it's recording. It's who's recording. Goldilocks and who's the bear? <laughs> you Goldilocks. Goldilocks. We're the two bears. This really feels like you're somewhere completely different. Just one minute mm. ago, we were on a, on the boat. Then we're on a dinghy coming across here, and now we're walking through a beautiful pine forest. Yeah, yeah it's nice. It's a nice, cool morning. It's not too hot. Nice yeah. blue skies. Nice bit of shade. It's lovely. Yeah. Looking forward to checking out the basilica and then the and two Not lighthouses. Long, but two lighthouses. It's a very full day.
path is pretty overgrown. I guess it is springtime. Everything is blossoming. The stones. I wonder if these were part of the basilica and they fell away. Sneak peek, cheeky. Cool, look at the shape of that. It looks like a, key, a keyhole. You know, like you're for an old fashioned key. I think it looks like a mushroom. Yeah, it looks, <laughs> also looks like a mushroom. Hi, sir. Hey, is everything okay? No, the wind is picking up and we're thinking we're drafting, both of us. Oh, I just, okay. just went over to your boat and he's picking up a little bit of pain because we're getting way too far to the rocks now. Yeah, okay, all right, we'll head back towards you. Okay. All right, thanks. See you in a bit. See you. Okay. All right, bye. Bye. bye, -bye. Gonna pick it? Well, we'll call when we get back towards that because he's actually on our boat at the minute. Okay, let's go. Okay, good. Okay. So we got some good stuff, okay? So, no lighthouses, no cemetery. Sorry about the basilica. But we have to go back, and this is real boat life. And we're very grateful to have a body boat to let us know. Oh, this is. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to knock that bug out. I just saw it. Reflex. Well, I guess on the way back, because I did do lots of research, <laughs> I can give you some some historical facts about the Basilica on our walk back to make up for it. So the Basilica has an estimated 6th century build and during the Venetian occupation of some areas of Greece due to their massive trading enterprise, it was used as a defensive position. It's right up on the, the lovely hill as well. Which is brilliant. Archaeologists and historians alike do believe that it was erected as a tribute to Saint Kerikos. Now, for all of you architectural nerds, I have some facts about the basilica that once stood. In its entirety, it used to stand as a triple naved basilica with a semicircular external apse, a single narthex, and two towers on either side of it. It was erected as a devotion to Christianity or during an era where there was a lot of Roman fervor going around these parts. Oh, down these rocks. Dum, dum, dum. Supposedly, this was actually a very common practice of the time. I don't know but particularly if it was in an act of revolt or if it was just in an effort to maintain the Christianity that was the previously predominant religion in the area. But let me know if you have any details. We are just about back now. I'll give you guys a look. On our walkies back, I presume that Marcus from Stay Salty, our wonderful body boats, will come and save the day again. And we'll run back to the boat and we may just have to pick up and leave. We'll see. Okay, thanks. It looks good. I can see it. We're standing over on the hill so I can see. and It looks good. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, Marcus wants to know there's no emergency anymore. Would we like to go to the Roman graveyard? Yeah, we'll just do that and then yeah, we'll just, come and meet them. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we're going to come over to the cemetery now. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, mate. Thank you. With the dragging crisis averted, the crew turned their sights to Fiscato Town, eager to uncover its vibrant streets and its local charms. Fiscardo, a charming village on the northern tip of Cephalonia, is renowned for its picturesque harbour and preserved Venetian architecture. In the context of Greek mythology, Fiscardo can be envisioned as a haven for seafaring heroes and as a place they would have taken refuge during their epic voyages. Its strategic location and serene environment would have made it an ideal stopping point for mythical characters. One can easily picture Fiscardo as a bustling port in ancient times, where traders, sailors, and perhaps even even gods in disguise mingled and shared stories of their adventures. The tranquil waters and lush surroundings of Fiscardo serve visually as a place where the divine and the mortal worlds intersected, much like many other significant locations depicted in Greek mythology. Okay, so change of plan. <laughs> Um, we contacted Marcus on our buddy boat, Stay Salty. They averted emergency, he went over on, on his tender and he took up about eight meters of chain. Uh, he was drifting, we were drifting. So he just set us, so less of an emergency. We're gonna head over to uh, a Roman cemetery, which is actually just on a little cove beside where we're anchored. And I'm just gonna check it out. We heard it's quite good. It's one of the, it's one of the things to visit when you're here. Mm -hmm. So we'll take you over there now and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll find some 
interesting things that you find in temperatures, like gravestones. <laughs> Unfortunately, no lighthouses. Okay. Yeah. There'll be plenty more lighthouses. Given that we're in a boat, we tend to, you know, yeah. come upon plenty of lighthouses. <laughs> Besides this. <laughs> and we're going to weigh anchor around four o'clock and head to another town called Bati. Mm -hmm. The winds have changed. They're coming in from the east, which is exactly where we're exposed on the on the bay where we're anchored at the moment. All right. Let's go. Just as they pick themselves back up, ready to dive into Fiscato's delights, another call forced the crew back, this time for good, as both anchors were dragging. With no time to lose, they rushed to Marcus's dinghy and all the way back to their boats. Okay guys, just kidding, no Roman cemetery. <laughs> We've actually just got to pick up and go now. Just to be safe, there's a lot more wind than expected. And yeah, look, there's Marcus getting back on his boat. We're just way too close to the rocks. And with a bit of swell, you know, slowly but surely, we could just be in a lot of danger. So I'm gonna get on the anchor and we're gonna go. Take this off, because we're not anchoring anymore. <laughs> Have you guys had any experience body boating? Has it saved your chomps more than a few times? Just give me the shout, yeah, when you need me to start picking up, okay? Yeah, I'm just trying to get my location yeah. There's a lighthouse, so one of them we were going to be visiting. <laughs> and, uh, okay, Terry, start picking her up when you're ready. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> She's in the pocket and full of mud. <laughs> okay, good job. Put it into the water a little bit if you can. I'll try and drag the mud off it. Yeah, good idea. I'll put it back down a little bit. Yeah. Worked like a charm, Captain. Back up. a nice pretty straight pickup. <laughs> Shall let that air out a bit. So this is real sailing life for everybody. <laughs> Things don't go to plan but I think it's a good practice for life. The salties are free and safe as well. Yeah. Oh, if we go onwards to... To Vati. Yes. On Ithaca. Yes. After a skill honing sail, a mythical journey through pine cones and rubble, and two interrupted sightseeing attempts, the sea called them onward and they answered, ready for whatever lay ahead. Leaving the godly port haven of Fiscato behind sooner than planned, the crew set course for their next Ionian destination. Join them next episode as they reach and explore Vati town on the storied island of Ithaca. How will the crew navigate the next phase of their journey? Stay tuned to find out. Which part of this story captivated you the most and what ancient legends do you think await the crew next share your thoughts in the comments below we can't wait to escape the ordinary with you see you there guys